I'm Nigar from Kurdistan region, which is the only federal region within Iraq. May some of you hear about it. I'm always saying I'm three in one. I'm a judge and a PhD student and a mom. My story started in, in 2007 when I decided to apply to become a female judge in a very tribunal community. To be a woman is just a very, very challenge in that community. And what if you want to be a judge there? At that time, one of my uh, relatives, she's a female, and she told me, are you serious? You want to be a judge? Are you serious? And one of my colleagues, male colleagues, she, he, he asked me, uh, it's haram in Islam, and it's forbidden. You should not to do that. What I wanted, and what I thought about it, it was I just want to be a judge. And I applied, I passed the oral and written test, and since 4th of January 2010, I'm a judge. And now, after 10 years, I'm working in three courts. I'm a member of the appeal court, in, and also I'm an uh, investigative judge, and also in first instance. Actually, it was a big challenge. It started when I started my, my uh, responsibility as a judge. I educated myself, I studied, and I worked very hard to prove myself to other male colleagues and to my uh, bosses that me, as any other male judge, I can do, and I apply the law, and I can even work much better than them. And now, after 10 years, we have three female judges. We encouraged other, me and my colleagues, we are working very hard. Now I'm proud to say that now we have a 30 female judge in Kurdistan region. And, and is that enough for me? No. To be happy, you should empower another person. You have to encourage. I'm always saying to the girls in my community, keep studying and never, never give up. You should study, you should have your job to be independent financially. And if you don't have that position. If you lose your, then you will lose your choices. You will lose your options. I remember one day in the court, uh, a lady came to my court, and she opened the case against her husband. She told me, Judge, I don't want to be divorced. She is married, and she had uh, six children. Actually, she, she had six children. I told her she had been beaten very strongly, very badly by her husband. I told her, why you want to continue your life with the person who is treated you just like badly? She, she told me, I, uh, I have not been educated. I don't have a job. I don't have choice. I just am opening this case just to encourage him or to push him to come back to me. And then I, I thought, why, why a woman in my community should bear all these bad treatment? And then I... Since that, I, I started to empowering women. And also, even those who gone through a wrong way. One day, a girl, she had only 16. She has been accused, she came to the... At, at that time, I was a judicial investigator, I just remembered. She has been accused for uh, working as a prostitute. And she had only 16. I listened to her story. She told me that she had been raped by one of her family, and she escaped from the, fa from the home. And she started since then working as a prostitute. Me and my colleagues, we, we told her, if you want to leave this job, we will help you. You can come to us on a monthly basis, and we can help you uh, till you will find a job. And we did so. After a few months, she came again to the court, and she had been accused for. Uh, she has been accused for working as a prostitute again. I told her why. She told me she got married, and her husband again pushing her to work to gain money for him as a prostitute. Actually, not all the story has a happy end, but I never lose hope. Because what which not happen today, it may happen tomorrow. So, and if you lose your hope, you cannot carry on. I was still working, and 
I will empower women in my community. It's very challenging for women in my community to work as a judge. I should convince that, but at the same time, now we are 30 judges, and we still we have hope. We have hope to be more and more in the coming day. Thank you.